And uh, if y'all know, Mr. Shepard, I don't know who organized the uh, wall in the back to block out the sun so it doesn't get so hot in here, but I think that's a good creative little solution there. All right, so to the world, it's a clock. The bottom line is what goes into a clock, a whole bunch of systems and little things that make that little thing tick and talk and do whatever it does to tell us the time. We're going to talk about some different systems that you guys can do, and I'm also going to talk about some different things before we get into systems and what can be done. First, we're going to have Miss Shandy, who's been here before, but yes. she's here under a different brand yes. and a different yes. community just down the street. So, Sandy, why don't you come tell us all the wonderful things going on? Hey, you're you're scary. Scary. You're hey guys, yeah, I'll just keep popping up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, if you didn't get any breakfast, you found some awesome, awesome stuff. Chick-fil-A, out of Wazoo. <laughs> people too and I'll keep it short I know you guys have a lot to cover um, but I did want to come in and I think I shared with Terry and with Rose too um, the last go around uh, when I was with SR homes we had done a lot of these realtor breakfasts and by far you guys rock like it, it, there's so many other offices that we went to that was no energy they're just like <laughs> going in like this and you you guys stood out so i was delighted when rose had an opportunity to get me back so i'm with taylor morrison homes now um they recently got back into got into the atlanta market last year when they acquired jeh homes and uh, a few weeks ago they also acquired acadia homes so we went from 15 communities in the Atlanta area to over 30. Um, so my community, which is Kingswood and Castleberry, which is probably not even five minutes from here, um, on Castleberry Road. I have ranches. I have new construction ranches that can be built with a loft option. With So your ranch is a three bedroom, two and a half bath downstairs. It's just a ranch. You have an option to add a loft area, which also increases it by another bedroom and bathroom upstairs. And I also have lots to do a ranch on a basement. Um, so my price is even with all of the upgrades on a slab are coming in right about three. Uh, a lot of our features are standard, like granite in the kitchen, um, those types of things. So um, it's, a, it's a great community, swim, tennis, clubhouse, $127 a month for HOA includes lawn, front sides and back, fully sodded, water to a third acre lots wooded. So it's really a beautiful neighborhood if you guys, I know I talked to a lot of people, you the only people that can't believe I found a ranch on a basement new construction in the threes. So um, love to see you guys come out if you have any clients to, to bring me in, but some opportunities there. Yeah, so what's the name of the neighborhood? Uh, we have a full brick crunch of oh, different okay. elevations, but not not four sides. You don't have all four sides. Mm -mm. No, it's concrete side. Is there another question? Could you repeat the name of the neighborhood? It's Kingswood. And it was Kingswood at Castleberry, but apparently they just shortened it to just Kingswood. Um, it's, I've also got a few of the lots listed on FMLS right now um, that I've spec'd out and put features into, but they're early enough in construction that if you had somebody that wanted to come in and change a lot of the interior features, you could do that too. How many of the lots are left on this Castle Gate Court? Um, I've got one, two, three, four lots left. Two of those are basement, and then I have a couple of inventory homes also. You do? Uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah, and I have a fully decorated model that shows off the loft option with an open rail system, and it's, it's gorgeous. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a three car option? No, do car. not. Those ranches are such a yeah. nice footprint on the lot that, and, and all of these, the, the final phase of this community is also a cul de sac. So, all of the home sites are in a cul de sac and really pretty. Um, so that's my that's my main one. I have to sell out of that to go to my new one, <laughs> which um, should be pretty much a slam dunk. It's go, I'm sorry. I, I just so there's five homes left because there was 13 yep. to start. And there's mm -hmm. five left. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Um, well, our newest community that will be coming out of the ground. We've got five starts started. Is Preserve at Fowler Mill. 
And this community, literally all of the home sites will be basement. Their backyards are going to be back up. Well, not like be on the creek, but Fowler Creek right there, which which is going to be the only divider from these home sites and Fowler Park, with all the green space, everything, and in fact, some of them are close enough to the creek that we're actually putting um, piers on the backs of some of the um, decks on the basement, just in case the creek does something special. Um, <laughs> 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 um, I didn't know how else to put that. If we get a lot of rain, and that creek starts rising, you'll be glad it's not there. But they'll all be about. We've got them from 2,800 square feet right up to about 3,400 square feet. And we've got five different plants that we'll be building. There'll be 18 home sites. It's one long cul-de-sac also, and. Um, They'll be basement. I don't have, they haven't released pricing to me, but I'm assuming that it's going to be probably mid threes starting somewhere in that area. And we should be pre selling that pretty quickly. What are the size of the lots? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Um, they just took the, they just kind of divulged to me that this is the new community. They're, um, they're, I mean, they look like they're, they're deep lots. And how much of that? is going to be um, kept as green space in the back versus what where the property lines are. But I'll be happy to find that out. Um, that's all I got. Right. And to see the neighbors in there, they got their fishing rods yeah. and they're sitting over there in dry land. What are you doing? Wait for that creek to do something special. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be my oh, right. oh, oh, right. do something special. <laughs> and, just, and just to <laughs> have that on, on the table. The Taylor and Morrison home, homes have been around for a long time. They are a national builder where um, corporate is out in Arizona, which I just returned from. But they're, they've got three markets out in California. They're, they're in many other areas. So they're just starting to really um, take hold in this, in this um, marketplace. But we have been voted by all of the homeowners across the nation as the number one most trusted builder. So, but that is something. Yeah, and you know, Walty made the bill the most times. And I'd rather be a trusted builder that builds a good home and keeps people happy than production. So, anyway, thank you for your time. Oh, the most important thing. Right? Did I get everything's business color? No. no. You're late. You're late. You're late. Sorry, you just. You should know. You did. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Jim, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He does. Oh, yeah. I don't win. Yes, you do. No, I don't. You do. Oh, this is a strategy. Like, if you win today, what are they going to win? I've got three. Oh, sorry. I decided to think outside the box and not do another Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if everything is going to be that's good. Would you like to? Sure. The rabbit fire. What's the first one? Cheesecake factory? <laughs> I said the first one, yes. I'll show you some people. Okay. Uh, second? Yes. And the cool thing is, I saw the cheesecake card. It says twenty to five hundred dollars. So I choose. <laughs> 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 oh my God! I can't believe it. No, just no. Hold.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, actually not finally because I'm going to go ahead and use your stack to draw for it. Who is? Oh. Diane. Diane, where are you going? Oh. 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 Several coupons and things, and all wonderful stuff. Thank you. Ten percent. Ten percent off the bottom. You can't be ten. Very well. Very good. Everybody get a nice thank you and round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. I'm looking forward to seeing those people with vision lines on their on their desks. Truly the most trusted builder is going to tell you to build in a floodplain. You guys can be like a house party, if you will. When the creep does something special, you'll feel like you're on one. You go down the river, you think you're in Mississippi. Well, you know what we're doing now. Uh, it's showtime. So, Jeff. You know what? I heard there's something out there called three percent down payment that people are doing now. Don't lie. I'm not. <laughs> really? Yes. Could you, you tell us about those? Do you have three percent down payment loans that are not FHA? We do. It's a conventional loan. It only requires three percent down, and there's no PMI. What? 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 Yeah, I guess that's decent credit, but yeah, 3% down, less than, you know, FHA is 3.5. Well, tell us, what's decent credit? 900 and 10. Anything, anything, anything over 800, that's pretty good. Wow. Anything over 660, we consider to be pretty good. So, for that program, you're going to get, it's a higher rate than FHA, but there's no PMI, so it's going to win out. There's less down payment. Um, there's no upfront funding fees like FHA, so... It's a win-win. It's going to cut into the FHA market for sure. Absolutely. Wow. We've talked about it before, but it's becoming more and more popular. So I want what's the pain for people on the FHA right now? What, what's the change from going You're going? Yeah. Um, PMI, the life of the So the, the uh, PMI used to be uh, once you got to 20% equity, that would wipe away. And now it is locked in for the life of the loan, whatever that is at the beginning. So it does cause the payment to be pretty high. For that, uh, for that factor to be in there. So this will not have that, and uh, big difference. And that's a good point. It's for life of the loan, but if you put 10% down on FHA, which I don't know why anyone would, but I have had people do it, then it does stay on for a minimum of five years. Just like the old, in the old days, it, it, it was a minimum of five years, and once you reach 20%, you could get rid of the PMI. Well, now you have to put 10% down for that to take effect for the five the five year rule. So. You know, it's a good program. How much higher is the rate? It just depends on the credit score. It's very sensitive to the credit score on the conventional side, just like it is on a normal 5% down. If you have a 640 score, you're going to get hammered on the PMI. Your PMI is going to be like 1.15%. That's higher than it is on FHA with a 640 score. So it's, it's a huge difference. That's why I'm saying you want to have better credit scores for the conventional piece, and you get crushed on the rate, too, the lower your score is. I mean, somebody with a 640 score is probably going to get four and a quarter on the rate. So, I mean, it's a big difference when you can get 3.25, 3.375 on FHA. So, that's why I'm saying if you fit that box with credit scores, it's a good program. You know, it's a little bit less down. So, but you really want to be probably even over 680 on the conventional side. So, good program. Uh, I want to talk about a few of the tools that I've been uh, giving to some of the agents that are taking advantage of them. Got some more of these signs here. I'm going to order some of these. Some of you, some of you that are using them, I've actually gotten some calls before they even call you. So they're plastic. They're not cheap. They cost me about thirty bucks a piece. So please, if you if, if you're going to use them and, and you're done with them, bring them back. I'm going to put them outside uh, my office underneath the uh, the mail where you get your mail. So I'm going to order some more of these. Anyone wants to use them, feel free to take them. Um, another thing, my app. A lot of people are using it. I get a report of usage of who's using it. 
I heard uh, Adrian in the open the other day where I was here at 8 o'clock at night and he was talking to a buyer saying, I'm going to share this app with you. You can run the payment scenario, see what you think you can afford. Uh, you're out in the car with them. You just hit the app. You can pull up FHA, VA, conventional, and it'll run the PMI, everything. Total payment. You put in the yearly amount of taxes. You put in the HOAs. Put in what you think the homeowners is going to be, and it'll spit out the total payment, and it breaks it down line by line. It's a cool tool. If you're not using it, let me know. I text the app to you, and you can download it to your phone. It's easy. Um, got the signs here. There was another one I was going to tell. Oh, rate plus. So those of you that are doing a lot of listings nowadays, which you should be, you know, doing your swatter days, um, I have a thing called rate plug. It pulls the information directly from FMLS on your listings, and it'll put three payment scenarios. Um, it'll, I'll usually give them a 30-year fixed. I'll give them a 15-year fixed if they want to be aggressive, and I'll do an arm to show them the lowest payment. So it's just another tool. Uh, if you want it, shoot me an email, shoot me a text, and I'll... You have to be approved. I have to send you a link to get on it, but it's called Rate Plug. It's a great tool. People like to see what the payments are, see what they can afford. So um, it's all about tools and teamwork. Two T's. Well, and that's one thing to think about. How can you leverage this to look better to the consumer? So, one, do you think that there's people that pull up in front of a for sale by or not for sale by uh, for sale sign, and they do not want to talk to an agent that's going to try to sell them something that they don't want? Would you agree with that? Yes. So uh, they don't know you. Might they call the mortgage person on the sign to find out what the payments might be on that particular listing? They might. They might not. But if you don't put this out there, then you got a lot less chance of them contacting somebody that can turn around and give you that lead. So if Jeff gets a call from one of your listings, who do you think he's going to turn around and give that lead to? First thing, I'm yeah. gonna, first thing I'm going to ask him is, where did where did you get my number? And they're going to say, oh, I got it off Sarah Stovall signs. And I'm going to say, okay, do you have a buyer's agent? No, I don't. Well, even if you don't buy that property, guess what? I've got a buyer's agent for you that can show you some others. So. The other thing is if you're a listing, you're getting ready to list your home, and you tell people how you use the mortgage person differently, you're going to put their sign out there so they can pick up calls that you wouldn't get, and then they're going to turn those leads over to you. That's how you can leverage that so that the people who list in your home go, oh, that's a unique thing. Most agents are not explaining things to the consumers of what they do to make them different. That's one thing we're going to be talking about here. But that's how you can take this little sign and have it be a good game changer for you and your listings and show people how you do work as a team, like he said, and get more leads in your pocket that can help them get their own sold. To go along with teamwork, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to partner with you guys, to be a teammate. So even if it's someone that's trying to buy your listing, you have questions. Hey, I've got three offers. One's VA, one's conventional, one's FHA. Why should I take this one over the other? I'm here to answer your questions. I had a call the other day. I'm not even going to be involved in the deal, but I'm here to partner with you. They asked me about a VA loan. Why should I take this offer? And I answered their questions because that's what I'm here for. My office is on the other side of this office. Come over, call me, come see me. Uh, that's what we're here for is to partner with you. And even if I'm not going to even be involved in the deal, I don't care. That's what I'm here for is to help you guys. So okay. well, use and abuse me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's take a quick look at FMLS stats real quick here, which you should have in front of you. Uh, the things that I noted off is uh, there was 3,975 closings for residential detached in February. Right? That reflects an increase over 6% from 2015. And that is with a tremendously low amount of inventory. Uh, so if there were more good inventory, uh, that would be absolutely nuts. Uh, sentence number three, the, the average sales price for residential went from 255, actually it was 255 versus 246 uh, last February. So you're seeing that slowing down of the amount higher that it's getting in the thousands, but uh, that's still incredible. So one of the things you're going to have people start to talk about this year is going, oh my God, and you're seeing it, and we're going to talk a little bit about it today. The bubble, the bubble, we're having another bubble form. We're having another bubble form. You can't keep doing this, and it's going to be a repeat of 2006. So is that real or is it not? Uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, there were 7,452 uh, single-family detached in year-to-date 2016. That's a 7% increase of sales uh, from 2015. So down at the bottom, I want you to pay attention to this. Watch new home inventory in your area. Watch the listings being entered because you're going to start to see more new homes being entered. And even though you're going to see the inventory levels going up, we're going to need to see more resales being entering into the market than new homes. 
And right now you're going to see an energy going towards new homes. The builders have been building inventory for the spring market. That's what they always do. So this is one of the things you're going to see going up. Your job is to take people to show homes and get them excited about moving. Somebody's going to do this in your world out there. It's either going to be you or it's going to be another agent. Who's going to be the first one to get them out of the car and get them excited about moving to the next property? You need to take that on yourself. So my advice to you is get out and drive to the new communities with models and inventory and get your butt out of your car and go talk to the agents, go see the model homes, go see the inventory and get yourself excited and then start packing people in your car and taking them out there just to take a look around. You will see things happen if you just simply do those things. Top three complaints when a home expires about agents and what they do or don't do. Who wants to take a guess at what they are? When you talk to an expired listing and you say, I want to have the top three, what were the three three things that your agent did not do or did not do well? What are they? Lack of communication. Lack of communication. Everybody says that. That's yeah. it. Didn't market my house. You're cheating. You had a sample on Saturday. No, I'm not. <laughs> they didn't do anything to market my house. And we never heard from the agent for sign. We never got any feedback, and they didn't do anything to market our home. Those are your top three things that people say if you ask them specifically. Give me something that you didn't think your agent did. Is that right? No. Sure. Sure. We'll go along. You know what I meant. So. <laughs> What I'm going to show you is some simple things that if you put into some systems and you start doing it today, and this this uh, this last Saturday, we sat down and we were talking about these things, and, and I realized there's a lot of agents that don't have systems that can be easily implemented, and some of you are at a point that you've developed different systems. What I'm going to encourage you to do is if there's something that you do that's different from what I'm going to go over, please take the opportunity to share with some others what you do in your strategy when you're explaining things to people, because these are things that will absolutely, if you step up and tell people, it'll become important to them, and they'll ask the other agents, what do you do in this? And they do not have systems set up. So I'm going to ask you guys this. One, what is your system for following up with your clients? Who in here wants to raise their hands and be very proud of us? I have a system that I wear out with my clients, and I explain to everybody. Okay. Come on, no, somebody has to. Go ahead, D. Hmm? Well, what I asked. Oh, the golden rule. The golden rule, or I use that. I, I set them up, and they get that every every week, which shows the uh, hits and activity on uh, on the internet for their. What listing. do you do in human interaction? With them? Well, I call them every every Monday morning. Okay. All of them. Each, each of my listings. If 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 not more often. Than what that. do you tell them? I tell them what what went on. I tell them, you know, good news and bad news, but that the act activity may have slowed down if it's an older listing, or I mean, just tell them what's. Does anybody have a specific day that they call all their clients? Okay, have three others. What is the day? I call them on Friday, and I give them information about their communities, what have sold, what's come up, what's surprising, everything information, amazing information to compare the houses with theirs and uh, give them a scenario with, where their price is and what the activity has been. Okay. It gives them specifically about their community. I'm going to advise you to open that up a little bit more and go to the high school district so you have something that changes. If you focus on just their neighborhood, not a lot of time, nothing will typically change enough to give you enough to talk about. So I'm going to show you some different things you can do, but I focus on the high school district and their price point because we'll give you more to talk about. What about the two in the back? I call on Thursdays and I do a super report and I'll say this is how many people, how many showings you had this week from these agents and um, the feedback that they give me is all in an email report or a, a verbal report and then um, we do what's come on the market and anything that has gone under contract I tell them about it and then every month they get an FMLS report to recap what's going on in their neighborhood. Yeah. Now, I was going to say, to, to add to that, I actually met, I listed a house and then met with them exactly two weeks after it had been on the market, and I printed that lot box report, mm -hmm. and I had made notations out to the side of every agent. I, that I, had called, but, I like that. The I called, box read out and yes. notes by what the people And I called every right. single one of them. I told them which ones, you know, were potential second showings. We kind of went over the whole thing. I like that. 
And you know yeah. I like that a lot because how many times do you follow up with agents and they never give you any feedback and therefore you forget that you need to follow up and tell the people. I did follow up with all these agents and so if you don't tell them that you didn't follow, that you followed up and they don't hear the feedback, guess what they think? Yeah. You didn't yeah. follow up. Yeah. Right? So I'm going to cover some things with you guys here that to get very specific. I love that, Lori, where you send the lockbox readout with the agents that showed with a quick little note out to the side. Never call back or talk to them. They came back two times. That it, that's yeah. very good. Um, how often do you do that? Well, um, I with this particular listing, uh, I did it exactly after two weeks because I wanted them to know okay. how many. So we're not going to say how this particular listing. What you got to do is set these systems up and set yourself up. Well, that's what worked for me for success. And yeah. say every two weeks, you're going to update your listings. And, and what you got to do is go, hey, plan for having ten. If you plan for having ten, you go every two weeks. I, I send a lockbox readout with notes out to the side. Then it's every two weeks on Wednesday, whatever the day is going to be. Now, what I recommend to you guys is on your follow-up days, it be a Monday or a Friday period. Monday or Friday, because you're getting close to the weekend. Friday, you're going to be giving them updated, useful information. Or Monday. And by the way, that's flyer follow-up, uh, going and walking through the home, things like that, to make sure everything's fresh and updated. You can either send them away for after the weekend and have a Monday talk, or I'm going to go into the weekend with a prepping it up. But this one I will tell you. You have to do this and make sure that it counts and call every Monday or Friday. You pick one. Week one, here's what agents don't know what to do. If you don't set it up and say, this is what you do, then you never know what to follow up with and you don't follow up with anything because you go, well, I just talked to him last week and your system gets wasted because you don't have a reason to be calling them because their home didn't get showed last week. So what you do week one is you review your parking that you put into place. Week two is you review action active inventory in the high school district since the home was listed. Week three, you review the withdrawals and expires in the high school district since the home was listed. And week four, you, pre you review the attending sales and sold. And then week five, you just rotate back to week one and go through. That is your consistent little system that you do for every single listing. And you call them to update them with this stuff. Even if, and what I tell people, if, I, if, I, if you talk to an expired and they say, I never heard from my agent, you know what I do? Every single Monday, every single Friday, I contact every one of my sellers, and we're going to talk about what's happening in the trends in the marketplace. So even if we talk, my day was Monday, even if we talk Sunday night at 10 o'clock in the evening over showings that you had, you're going to get your weekly call from me on Monday to talk about the market trends that are going on that impacts the sellability, the sellability of your home. Now, let me tell you, agents, well, we've had a good sample pool in here. 80 to 90% of the agents do not have a system around follow-up and just communicating with people. If you know that, you go into and you buy into this system and you go, hey, I need to make sure that when I go on a listing appointment, a listing presentation, I'm competing with three other agents. And I tell the people, one of the biggest challenges we have as realtors is most agents don't have a follow-up system. I'm going to do this for you. And then you know what happens to those people? They will ask the other agents, what's your system for following up? And you know what the other agents are going to do? They're going to freeze. They don't have a system. Oh, I'll follow up with you when, when this happens or that happens. I stay with you. When you get specific with them, all of a sudden you're going to be the leader. You're going to win more than you lose out there because you're solving a problem that everybody deals with in the business. So just remember, most agents never set a system for follow-up. If you do, then you'll stay on the presentation and it becomes more important to them and you will win. I promise you. That is just one of the things that is so simple. And I will tell you this, set your plan up today so that when you got five listings, you know when I started getting busy in, in the listing world. I didn't have systems. So all of a sudden on Wednesday, somebody would call me and say, I'm out of flyers. And then on Thursday, another listener called me, I'm out of flyers. And then on Saturday, and I thought, wow, I, I'm running my butt off doing things that are non-productive. So how can I make sense of all this and go, I need to clean all this up so that every single day I'm following through and update, well, not every single day, but every single specific Monday, I'm going through and take care of all the client duties that I need to. They're going to hear from me. I'm going to update my flyers and get everything out of the way. So the rest of the week, I can focus on productive measures. Does that make sense? Yeah. I can tell you there's so much time wasted in this business from agents that don't simply set up the system because they go, oh, I've only got one listing. Set it up with one. <clears throat> and then when you add two, you go, it's the same system. It makes it so much easier and what people build into five to ten active listings at any given time, and it'll be easy to manage versus feeling like you are, I'm telling you, when you hit five listings and you don't have systems set up, you feel like you're on fire every single day that you're in the business. So make it easy on yourself. What are the things that agents do wrong with listings? 
This isn't supposed to be a negative meeting, by the way. It's supposed to be positive. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is myself. I've noticed, my top notice, they are terrible at working at home. Who in here, as an example, has a degree in marketing? Who in here? That's great. No, there's two of you. Two of you. Think about this, guys. Think about this. Two out of all of you have degrees in marketing. What about marketing companies? How many of you are a professional marketing person or ran a professional marketing company? Two. Different one over here. Okay, so I want you to think about this. This is the same sample pool. Every single office has this. Very few agents get into business. They get in going, I like showing homes. I like people. I'm going to be a great realtor. And it's flexible in time, so I control my own business. Right. And then what happens? I was talking to somebody this weekend. Took my wife's car in the shop yesterday. I'm sitting there talking to this uh, consultant. She goes, oh, you're in real estate. I tried real estate back at the downturn of the market. Oh, it was the wrong time. She said, but you know, I got in the business thing and I can do really well, even though I don't say, if I can sell homes during this time period, I'm going to really make it when it's, when it's uh, doing well. And she goes, but you know, <laughs> I, I, I work with structure a lot better. I found myself going to the gym. I found myself going to the movies and circulating around my friends, and I didn't really do anything business-wise, so I needed more structure. So here she is making maybe twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a year, where she could have gone and sold four or five homes in our area and matched more than that and just worked it smarter as opposed to going, oh, my God. You guys have the best opportunity if you just simply create your own structure and time management and time blocking needs to become critical for you, and you'll be amazed that you won't have the opportunities to have to go get another job because you weren't able to control your own destiny. So back to this. They're terrible. Not only are they terrible time blocking and time management, the marketing of the home. Go to Zillow and check things out. Now, who in here has a system that they buy into for marketing a home online? Your photos is what I'm talking about. How do you put your photos online? Anybody got a specific? Yes. The first five that are most important features, bathroom, kitchen, you can match that kitchen. The first five the first pictures. First five photos. Make it. So, specifically of your arrangement, and I'm going to assume that you have a professional photographer that takes the photos, especially if the listing is above 200,000. If it's below 200,000, I'll give you a little more cream. I can understand where you go. I'm not going to spend that because, one, I'm not making as much money, but two, below 200,000, there's just not so much a professional photographer you going to take pictures of, right? Um, but when it's above 200,000, I'm going to assume that you are absolutely investing $100 approximately to take professional photos. Because that's not only going to future listings, that's going to buyers that will contact you or not. But how do you arrange those photos? Sarah Snowball just said, I take the first five photos that are the most impactful for that home in that price range. Now, I'm going to tell you, I just went on Zillow this morning. I'm going to pull one of the sites up in a minute on a $300-some thousand dollar home. And the best pictures of the entire home are at the 24th and 25th slot, which is good for her. She took... 25 photos and put them online. But the two back lawn shots were the most important ones that as a buyer, I'm sitting there going, I went through back rooms and secondary bedrooms before I got to the money shot. Would I have gone through all those photos? Probably not, right? So you got to get them excited on the front side. And I'm going to tell you guys this, if you can, if you can lay out a plan and you say, most agents don't have a marketing plan for how, they're, how their listings are going to look online. What I do as an agent is I'm going to take the first, the most impactful five photos and make sure that those are the first ones that the consumer online sees. Because I got to get them excited about the rest of your home. So I got to make sure that I structure those according. Because most agents today, they'll take whatever the photographer sends them and they go dump that straight into the system. How many of you do that right now? Nobody does? So I can go check out. Okay. Who has the listing they'd like me to pull up? I'll just test it out. All right. <laughs> you got to own this stuff, but if you tell them what you're doing, all of a sudden you become the star. If you don't tell them that it means nothing, they won't know any different. And that's why I see a lot of agents sacrifice this. They don't tell them what they're doing. The more, most agents don't really know what they're doing, period. So, I always remember this. You are controlling your image to the future sellers and to be able to attract more buyers. If you take control of those pictures, and you get very specific, and you'll then go, what are my top five photos that draw the most emotional connection to this listing? That's what I need to go forward with. And if you tell people that, 
no other agents are telling them that if they do it, then go to Zillow and go check out the listings out there below 500. When you get above 500, the pictures look good. Below 500, you'll say, oh my God, why did they put those photos at the end? It's because the photographer took them in that order. That's how it happened. Yes. <clears throat> just going to suggest also if you have a not particularly exciting shot, but it's a hard shot, like a bedroom, put an interesting shot immediately afterwards, but always the less interesting and then a more interesting, and always end on the house photos before you get to amenities with a great emotional shot. So the whole sequence. Is That's amazing. another thing, amenities. I see neighborhoods with great amenities out there, and, and, and none of the agents are taking the time to go shoot the, the amenities and make that lifestyle moment, right? By the way, does somebody need to see the half baths? And the hot, really, some, some of the half bathrooms, but the secondary bathrooms where you see a, a, a double vanity with a double sink, who cares? Or a picture of the toilet. A picture of the yeah. toilet. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. What the hell? <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Because most people don't take the time to think about it. Your job is to market that property. By the way, before you call expired, if you want to go pull up that listing and how those photos look, and you call somebody, you go, well, I saw your home and looked at your home online before it expired, and I can see why it expired. That your agent did not have a good photography uh, experience for your listing. Here's how I shift things around. The one, I can tell you this, 80-90% of listings out there do not have a professional photo that has been taken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think if you go into somebody's home that did not have a professional photographer and you go, hey, I, I don't ever try to take my own photos. I have a professional photographer come in because they got better lens. It's going to show better bring more people to your home. Then what I do is I take that and I take the first five most emotional photos and I stack those on the front side because of how people psychologically buy online. Also, people go, wow. And I noticed your agent didn't do either one of those. And do you think the other agents that are calling them are saying anything about that? No. We put no thought process behind this marketing stuff. It kills me. So pay attention to what you're doing, okay? Now, what I want to do is talk about a couple things. The bubble, you can never forget about cycles, but the next 24 months look doggone good for real estate. That's the Urban Land Institute, which is one of the uh, better known uh, institutes out there for studying what's going on in the market out there. So it's saying, hey, you know, we are in a cycle. But you know what? We're kind of at a, a blip that happened that is a little different than what people are thinking would be going on right now. But the next 24 months look pretty good. But guess what? At the end of that 24 months, it's probably interest rates are probably going to be a good bit higher. The prices will have kind of stagnated some of the buyers from being able to keep going in the pool. But the question is, are we even approaching another housing bubble? Who in here thinks that with the price escalation that we've seen around here, who in here thinks we're heading for a price bubble? Nobody? One. One had the guts to raise her hand. I kind of do. I kind of do. How many? How many of you kind of do? That's safe. How many kind of do? I think it's in the next year and a half. I think it's really going to depend on the hedge funds and what their exit plan is going to be. The inventory that they're still holding. Okay, so Sarah said she thinks a lot of it depends on the hedge funds that bought homes three to five years ago and the big pools, and they've been sitting on it. Their exit strategy was to hold it three to five years. And they're going to start selling the homes that will greatly appreciate over time. And have they appreciated? Oh, yes, yes they've appreciated. They so do you think that those those big hedge funds are going to start releasing inventory? Yeah. Probably so. Yeah. I think they're going to start releasing yeah. it. I, I if you were going to release, it would now not be the time to do with the low inventory that you've got. I think that you're not going to see the bubble, the bursting of the bubble like you saw it in 2008. Only because the the credit is different now. It's a more of uh, a solid credit. You're not only gonna have the you know the Whitley uh, glass slug in the glass type of deal. So you have a more solid footing on that. But I have a feeling that there are so many things right now happening, not only around the world but in the United States, that are going to might affect where we head in the next 24 months due to elections. I think a lot of things are in the air that really nobody has really put a really a uh, uh, finger on it. It's just a lot of well, uncertainty yeah, out there. How many people in here are new to real estate since 2007? Raise your hand. I want y'all to turn around and look at this. Raise your hands if the 2007 is about 50% of the rate. Huh? Nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did the same thing. I was talking to Jeff. Um, 
for those of you that don't, you might not know how easy it was for, and Lewis is hitting on, on a big factor, the housing bubble that was here before was led from a financing disaster. And I want to make sure that we understand why it's totally different today, even though in our area, we're pretty much back to 2006 price, 2006, 2007 pricing. That's where we are today in this pocket. Not across the country, but in this pocket. Okay? So naturally, you're going to have people going, oh my God, we're back at that time. Look at the disaster that's going to happen because the last time that we were at this point, boom, it's like an earthquake, right? So what is different today? Back in 2005, 2006, they had what was called a stated income no doc loan. Jeff, you remember those? Oh yeah. Why don't you tell everybody? <laughs> okay. Because sometimes we forget these things, and you go, "Oh my God, we're, we are we can't keep going in this direction." So tell us, what was a stated income non doc loan? Well, you had different ones. You had CESA, which is stated income, stated asset, and basically just we call it the liar loan. They just say what's the name and you know, they say whatever they had in assets. We didn't have to prove it. No bank statements. No pay stub. No tax returns. It's the liar loan. So we had that. We had a complete no doc. All we did is pull their credit score. If they had over a seven hundred, they could get the loan. I did, I did one in my whole career, and it was for a school teacher. She was in between switching schools. And then she ended up refinancing in six months anyway, so she was out of the product. But I mean, it's flippers that were going and contracting down in Florida, where they were buying in the condo projects that uh, they were flipping and making hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, and they never even closed on it. All they did was flip their contracts. This is the kind of money that people were making, and it was hand over fist. So not only did you have that happened, you had artificial price increases that did not make any sense and were not real, but nobody stopped it because they didn't know, hey, this is going to have a dramatic effect on our financing world. Uh, but stated income, non-verification of, of uh, documents. So Jeff would basically call somebody and could say, hey, Jeff, I'm, I'm looking to buy this $4 million home. What do I have to be making in order to be able to do that? Oh, by the way, can you get me an interest only loan? Sure, I'll throw that in. How about a pay option on? <laughs> so, where, where five years before you might have been able to buy a five hundred thousand dollar home, now you can go buy a one point five million dollar home. Mm -hmm. Call Jeff, say I want interest only because man, this market's going to keep on going up. Jeff says, well, you got to be making this. By the way, I've got non uh, non verification of, of uh, whatever. Uh, how much do you make? Oh, well, I make just what you said. <laughs> 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 And you know what happened? People that were 1099 people that felt like, hey man, I just had a good life. I, have, I just got into business. I've been in it and I'm doing pretty good. I think I'm going to be making more every single year. And so they state the income that they got to make, and all of a sudden the next year happens where it goes down, not up. What happens to them? And this is what happened across the board. Then you had on top of that all those risky type ones, which bartenders were buying million dollar homes and rental properties and stuff. <laughs> True? Yeah, we call it the heartbeat loan. Heartbeat. You got a heartbeat? You get a loan? Uh, 580 score, yep, you get the loan. Can you sign that here? <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you guys this. Every single person in this room, I think I said last week, what was the movie I said to go watch? The Big Short. The Big Short. The Big Short. Did I tell you all that last week? Yes. The Big Short. Go watch that. It is a phenomenal movie, and for anybody in real estate, you need to watch it because you need to be able to educate people. I don't think we're at the housing bubble that we were back in 2006, 2007. If you understand that, then you can go have more confidence because people are going to be going, maybe I'll wait. That home seems high priced. But the people that are getting loans today, Jeff, by the way, also credit scores, how different are they today versus what they were? No bad, definitely bad. So back in the day, you could be from a different country, come over to this country, go get a credit card, and all of a sudden you made four payments and you got an 800 credit score. Okay, so they clean that stuff up too. So what would happen is these stated income, non doc asset, all that stuff, um, the people would have an 800 credit score, so they're, they're going, well, they got a great credit history, so, well, actually, if that person just got over here and they really don't have any history, but the only thing that they're paying on from six months ago is good. And it's their hundred dollar a month payment on their credit card. Good job. So this is true. That's what happened with the big bubble before. It was not a housing bubble, it was a financing bubble that was all this loosey goosey stuff that the you know New York market up there that they wanted to create ways that they could have just money flowing through. Why did they make a lot of money? 
And that's why you need to watch the big short, because I do not believe we are going to another housing bubble because the credit is, it, it's, you got to have good credit to get a loan today. You got to have good payment history based off of today's standards of the credit line stuff, of the uh, credit rating thing. So it's totally different. Impact of monthly housing on inventory less than six months of the seller's market. Where are we right now in Atlanta? Seller's market. We're in a seller's market. With the shortage of inventory that's there right now that you can show people here through your FMLS stat sheet, is now a great time to be listing your home. Is it going to be this way forever? Probably not. So everybody knows the spring market gets hot, so I'd get out there and start talking to people. Uh, between six and seven months will be a long way away from that. Uh, that gets to a neutral market and then anything greater than seven months. And you guys need to understand this, just because it's going great in your area, once you get above six, seven hundred thousand dollars, you might start getting into areas that are buyer's market, not seller's market. So don't buy into the whole global act application of what's going on in our market. Go in there and start looking at the price ranges, segment things out in your high school district, and start looking for where are the problem spots that I need to watch out for and uh, get those people to get their homes a price rate and get in the right condition. As we are seeing a lot of homes resale wise start to sit. Are y'all seeing that, that out there? Sit, not sell. Gates on the market. You put one home on the market, it's in great condition, it has all the newness, it sells off the hook at a very high price, right close to this price. You put some out there that's not in great condition, it will sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and do nothing for anybody. All right, so this goes into the the pre-bubble back in 1987 to 1999, there was a 3.6% appreciation average. And then we went to the bubble years, 6.9%. That was 2000 to 2007. What caused that was all the loans that we just talked about, and everybody could get a loan. I'm going to show you a little mortgage analysis, the mortgage bankers analysis on the other side. When we hit 2007, the annual average was 5.2% loss, 5.2% loss. And since January of 2012, we have averaged 4.5% increase in your prices across the board. Most of the people out there that are predicting things for the future for the next five years, they're predicting about a three to three and a half percent increase per year over the next five years. That's pretty normal and that's pretty good. I'll take that. That does not mean bubble, bubble, bubble. Yeah, and, and you know, back to the, to the hedge funds, I think, my theory, is that because they have their own real estate, some of these hedge funds created their own brokerage, I think they're going to sell homes you amongst themselves other, yeah. and to their tenants that now have yeah. their credit back, but not quite where they can go to get a conventional loan. I think you're going to start seeing them doing their financing and, 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 sure. and keep their losses yeah, amongst themselves too. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I just, I don't foresee I that inventory coming back anytime soon. I don't see it coming back in the onesie twosie thing that we would think of. You're gonna to have to. I was talking to somebody yesterday, not yesterday, like Friday, and they said that they just were offered a 150 home bundle in Atlanta. And okay, that was from an investment hedge fund that basically is going, hey, here's a good opportunity to you know stave off some of these homes that we got renters in. So most investors that are looking to buy good inventory right now, they can still get a decent price. But we're gonna make a ton based off what we've had, and we've got renter in place. And they'll sell those off 100, 150, 200 homes to uh, mid sized investors that want to go to take advantage of that. So that's right up in line with what you're But saying. I think they're trying to free up some cash because I honestly do not feel like that they have made the kind of money they thought they were going to make. I mean, when they only want a 6% net return. So I think, well, I think some of them are just getting rid of stuff. I think, I think so they can they're trying open inventory for themselves. You know, buy more property. property. No, I want no, to make them that money. So some of them are just cleaning them. Well, if, if you had thousands of homes, would you sit there and go onesie, twosie, or would you go, let's bundle them up and sell them to, right. you know, let's sell them to five investors versus going onesie, twosie and try to eat that every dollar we can. Now they're going to do big groups, and so they're going to go down to the mid-sized person or the smaller person. So I agree with you on that. And some of them will be onesie, twosie, but for the most part, they're just going to bundle them up because they're not looking to do specific onesie, twosie things. But like Sarah said, a lot of the companies have gone and opened up their own brokerages. So it'll be interesting to see how they. I think they're going to sell them to their tenants. Here's the thing that you guys need to. That I'll send these charts out. This is something that anybody that says we're heading towards a housing bubble, you can say, look, theoretically, I understand what you're saying because prices have gone up, and we are about at the 2006 7 levels. 
But this is the availability of credit back in the day. And what that big thing means right there is everybody on the planet could do anything they wanted to get a loan. And by the way, how easy was that? Uh, interest only, non-verification of documents, and non-verification of your income. Is that pretty easy? Get loans? And people in the 500 or so are able to get uh, homes. So everybody was buying things. Now, we've settled down. We've gone back to a nice, strict standard for the most part, but you've still got, Jeff, what's the lowest score that somebody can still buy a home with? 620 with us. There's some out there that'll go to 580 on the FHA, but there's all these overlays that make it really tough, but typically 620 is the majority. Okay. So that's still pretty flexible. You're just not seeing a lot of those people jump in and get that. Correct, or are you seeing a lot of that in fidelity? I'm seeing some like I'm having to rescore people that are right on the border 620, and then I look at their credit report and it'll say pay down this credit card, this, and it'll actually tell me the exact amount of points I need to get them to 620. So I do that a lot for clients. That's sweet. All right, now what I'm going to do is we're going to end on this last one. I want to go back to this. One, get your system. Your system is going to be designed so that you can answer these three things. The top three things, nobody in here should ever have a problem with their client saying, I never heard from the agent after we signed. We never got feedback from the showings that we had. By the way, here's what I tell people. If somebody says, what, 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 is, what do you do for feedback? Well, the last agent we had did not give us any feedback. This is what I'll tell you is a good, clean system to use. Does anybody in here wear out the agents just to get feedback? I hope you don't. If, so if, if you do, no. stop. Because I'm no say why. Is your Sarah, will you say what you said? It's so annoying. It's so annoying. You will piss off the producing agents that you don't want to piss off. You may think you're doing a good service for your clients, but you're pissing off agents that will not want to show you. Really? Oh, God, I don't want to show you. I had one call me three times in one day. Morning, noon, and night. And I just didn't call them back because I, I think that's Or yesterday. I meant to apologize. Yesterday, when we were. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to give them feedback? No, that's <laughs> So what did your folks think about me? <laughs> so he doesn't want to sell to you. <laughs> so what, what I would tell you is this. I would tell everybody in my in my thing, this is what I would do. Hey, I'm gonna set you up. Every agent that shows your home is gonna get automatic feedback from the Y'all know what you can do with these super yeah. systems that set up for your auto feedback. So they're going to get an email from me. I'm going to text them, and I will call them. If they do not reply to the, one of those three things, I'm not going to keep harassing them because I want agents to want to show my homes, not run from showing my homes. So if they do not respond to one of those three things, we have to assume you're either in the middle or you're at the end. Okay? Now, that is a system that you can explain to people that makes sense. And... Trust me on this, do not get in the habit of pestering the hell out of agents just to try and get feedback from what you already know about them. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. So, hopefully at the end of the day, you'll take into control of the marketing for the home. If you do not have photos lined up the way that you should, go change them today. Go line up the first five photos being the most emotional impact for that price home and everything. And answer these three questions and tell people what you do. And when people have expired, Understand what you can do to make yourself look 10,000 times better than anybody else is talking to. Any questions or comments? We do have a lunch in. Alex, would you like to tell us about the lunch? Oh, absolutely. We are having a uh, lunch at Crickstow with two houses. Uh, food being served would be the turkey Zulov sandwiches, also known as a turkey Reuben, provided by Zulov. And at the other house, we're having Salisbury steak, also known as a $50 gift card from Salisbury. Um, we have uh, a bun cake from Nothing Bun Cake. We've got Heidi Heavenly Cookies, and I think she's even gone out and bought some uh, like 25 lottery tickets. She may have already scratched them off, I'm not sure. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's from 11.30 to 1.30 today at Creekstone. Very good. That was a good little roll on. Um, we're coming soon. Remember, what, let's review this real quick. Make sure that you're looking over these. We will be emailing them out. What do you have to have in order to get your home on this list if you have a coming soon home? Listing agreement. Listing agreement in hand signed or authorization. an authorization to show unlisted property. One of those two will get your home in this list. If you do not have one of those, you can't put it on the list. So it's a way to help get you in front of people and get you to start being their agent. Rob, Deb, you got anything you want to share? 
Well, she's got in the room, but we do have another new age and her name is Jennifer. So hopefully next meeting I'll be able to introduce her. Okay. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's real simple. If you want to get out there and either call expires, call spare influence, or call FISBO, come on in. We're here to help you guys. It's very simple. Look at the calendar, keep up with things. Other than that, y'all have a great day. Uh, and thank you very much for coming. Go get some good food from Alex again.